Hi, it's Jeff here from discoverdoublebase.com. That is the home of online video double bass lessons. I always ask people to go and check out the website. And you really should because there's absolutely loads of lessons by a, a range of tutors, uh, including myself, Olivier Babaz, who I'm chatting with today, um, John Goldsby. There's a lot more that you will enjoy, I'm sure. And today we're going to be talking about equipment and uh, specifically for jazz bass players who are improvising with the bow and wanting to get out there, get on the bandstand. And if you've played a little bit with the bow on the bandstand, and particularly if you've used a pickup and an amplifier, I'm sure you've faced some challenges. So I'm gonna learn a little bit more about Olivier's equipment, as he's a real specialist in the area, and get a few recommendations about what people might be using at, at home. So Olivier, first of all, thanks for joining me today. Thanks. Well, let's start yeah. with the basics. What instrument are you using? I know maybe you have a couple, and maybe you could talk a little bit about what you find works well for the jazz bass player using the bow, what kind of instruments? Yeah. Uh, basically for all, which is all jazz thing, I use a K, mm. so a pride bass, uh, plywood, great, great American bass, it's really nice with a full circle. So you don't need an expensive, fully carved bow to Not play Not necessarily arco? if you're amplifying it. So if you're amplifying it, you, I, I tend to use the amp more it depends if if I'm playing in a club concert in a club context where it's not very very loud. I will more use my amp as a subwoofer than as a real amp. I, I, I prefer to have just the low frequency going through it. Yeah. And especially for the bow, you don't really want all those medium high, almost plastic sounding thing. Mm. So the key is just to play with a massive acoustic sound and just have the. I mean, in the, be in the best world, yeah. and just have the amp backing you for, the low, for, for really the low parts. And when you're playing bow, you're losing a little bit of bass frequency for the band, so, so that the amp can provide a little bit of bottom. But it's just about playing acoustically the maximum that you can. And for bigger venues, like, uh, for instance, uh, outdoor festival shows, in this case, I will try to have, like, really to put some uh, a really great amp setup and really dial my sound and as and maybe try to have an EQ pedal for the bow parts where it cuts a little bit in the medium. So before we talk about the amp and the pickup, I mean, you, you have mentioned the pickup that you use already, but w what about microphones? Is that something that you, you yeah. found? A, a microphones with backline? Because I find <coughs> that it works, you know, a microphone is a great addition if you're sending it to the front of house, but I personally found it a real challenge to use with my amplifier. Yeah. I mean, what's your experience? I experienced a little bit of everything, and as you said, um, the best thing is to have some kind of small setup on stage with, I mean, to me, yeah. with the sound of the pickup and to fit the PA with a, with, with a good condenser microphone. Okay. And in the ideal world, you don't even send the DI signal. Sure. Yeah. Just send them the acoustic one. And you're even doing yourself with the amp, you're kind of expanding the bass sound. I mean, the, 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 the microphone actually picks up a little bit of the amp. Mm. So you're really dialing your sound yourself with, with the condenser. So we've, uh, you've told us about the K that you enjoy using, the F Fishman Full Circle, is that? Yeah, I have other basses as oh, well. K is for mainly for, because, I, because of the pizzicato, I, I love the attack it gets mm. and everything. As soon as I have a more, uh, a more really, with a lot of bowing and mm. maybe something less jazz, I have, mm. I have a check bass at home mm. that's, doing really similar kind of thing to yeah kind of yeah kind of that really with nice a stuff. different setup but uh, yeah it's a flat back uh, like yours and uh, uh, of course solid wood uh, really mm. nice bass quite fragile so that's why that's another reason why I, I don't take it I don't take it at any gig but uh, same thing it has full circle on it mm. but yes I prefer to put a microphone in front of it in the best in the best world, I really prefer to have the amp with just the bass, just the bass part of my sound through the amp, and the rest of my sound is is the acoustic. Do you care much about what amplifier you're using? Is it important yeah. to you? Yeah, it's important, of course. Uh, um, 
When it's small venues, of course, a small amp can do the work. Acoustic image are great. Mm. Uh, Phil Jones are great. I tend to go back a lot. And recent this last year, I've used a lot the GK112, one, one the, mm. the, the very classic. Uh, the MV150, yeah. Just because it has a 12-inch speaker, which gives, which gives in, in, this, in this scenario of amplification, mm. When you just want to have like a subwoofer effect more than real amplifier effect, it's not like I don't consider it as a very transparent amplifier, mm. but it has more low end because to me because of that 12 speaker. So in fact, I just play very strong with the bass and have that just to give me. And it's light as well. That's an and it's light and small, very easy to carry. Absolutely, that's uh, to me that's one of the best uh, ratios of, uh, of weight yeah. and, and size. So I mean, that's the thing is there's so many different options for but ba for bass players, especially with amplification. What works for you might not work for somebody else. But and depending on the gig as well, if you need a bigger some. amp, you if you need a bigger amp, those amps won't be if you, it won't be enough. Like I, I yeah. have Mark Bass and Mesa Boogie as well and Eden for like the bigger venues. This this is the thing, there's so many great uh, great brands out there. I, I'm a really big fan of euphonic audio and acoustic image, um, and it definitely gives us a range of things. So, the, well, the big question that everybody has then is about strings, because um, what strings are you using and what do you think are a good choice for a jazz bass player who's using the bow? If you have one bass and that you have to make uh, your gigs and all your practice <laughs> with that bass, you should choose your string uh, because of the pizzicato. If that's the yeah. main thing you're playing, you should not choose your string because of the bowing, yeah. because maybe it's not the best thing for the pizzicato. Hmm. But to me, all the string works, all the basses work. You yeah. just have to make it, them work. I think to me, the, the best compromise is spirocore. Yeah. And I know a lot, a lot of people don't like Spirocore for bowing, yeah. but I've always come back to Spirocore. And um, the very simple strings, they give a lot of information. It's you who are, and you are as a bass player doing, with the bow, I mean, you are doing the job of dialing your sound. I think you're, you have, yeah, you have, there is a lot of harmonic content in the Spiro when, when they are bowed. So, it requires maybe a little bit more dialing than some others, and even in, to get some really deep basses, but, but I really like them. I really like them, and they're aging really good. They're really, they really can have a real lifespan. I mean, to my experience. Do, do you use the, uh, the light gauge or the solos or the I use orchestra? the red red. So red red. I don't, oh, right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's the medium gauge. Medium yeah. gauge. Did you, did you find any difference? So my bass has got the lights. The yeah, I, did, no, did I didn't any find any or? difference. No, because but you know, it's, not, it's not the setup. It's not the. It's it's more the setup and the instrument yeah. itself that does the work. But it's really great. Really great. You you yeah. It depends of your of your of your um, of what you like. But for when it comes to pizzicato playing, I may like it a little bit more muscular than those ones. Yeah. But your bass sounds great, and it's not—it's really a matter of taste. But I like it when it's a little bit, a little bit more stiff for yeah. pizzicato. But for arco, they are really great. But I've tried a lot of different strings, and Dadario have great products as well. Yeah, I agree with that. And even high-end classical strings. Mm. But I mean, at the end, you're just doing the job yourself. Mm. I mean. Gear is important, but it's just the, the, the apparent part of the iceberg, as yeah. uh, you can say. It's, it's really interesting to me because, you know, we've had some great people come in and use my instrument. And every, I mean, it's set up well, so everybody can just get their own sound and everybody sounds different. Yeah. There's, and it's great because, I mean, like literally one week to the next, we've a different, different artist coming in and playing the bass and it's, and it's a different sound. And I get a lot of uh, inspiration from that. It makes me realize nice. how I need to be uh, spending less time on uh, searching for double basses for sale and more time just practicing. Oh, we uh, all spend too much time searching for double bass yeah. on the web. So lastly, just a tiny little question. Do you find that there's any issue in terms of transitioning between pits and arco when you're playing live in terms of volume, or have you just learned to deal with it? Because I know some bass players use volume pedals slightly <clears> to, as the that volume is naturally louder of, of arco for me, I, I, unless I'm in a show or something, I can, I can only think of very odd circumstances where 
I've had a different setup. I've just kind of played the same. But what do you do? Yeah, uh, same thing. I tried all the different solutions, yeah. and none of them is uh, perfect. Yeah, you can have even two. I, at one point, I even had two amps with oh, two different, uh, with one with the microphone and yeah. one with the pickup, and I had this switch pedal. Yeah. It made really no sense going to yeah. the gig like this. Eventually, f from my point of view. It's more a musical question than a gear question. It's more about... Yeah, I, believe, I agree. And we discuss about that in the course, and that's mm. great that you raised this question, but it's more about having yourself... Accept, accept the sound you have and mm. make music with it and, and make the other people listen to you mm. and not waiting that the other listen to you, but make them actually listen to you. When mm. you get the bow out for a solo, mm. you have to... You have to Go get people, and the first one to get is yourself. So mm. be convinced by what you do, and the other are the band, the bandmates, and then the audience. I mean, to, the the question to your answer is: I cannot. I don't. It, to me, it's really not a question of gear. Mm. Yes, absolutely, you can try to have a little bit less medium. Sometimes I told I told you for bigger venues when you have a, when a lot of the bass info comes from the amp. I use an EQ pedal to cut a little bit the medium highs. That's just how I do with my bass in this situation. But basically being the, the clearest possible, having the, the nicest sound and the strongest sound because you want a clear and strong voice at first. It will, it will, it should do the work to people will adapt to your playing if you're really clear and strong enough. Yeah, it's conviction of idea, and I've really enjoyed listening to you improvise with the bow because I get myself tied in knots and uh, quite quickly when I'm trying to improvise with the bow, but you're absolutely free to express your ideas just as naturally as you would do pizzicato. And, and for people watching at home, I'd really encourage you to check out Olivier's website, which is olivierbabaz.com. Of course, there's links below. There's links below to his social media channels and, of course, uh, you know, the, the uh, lessons that we have been filming to, uh, for Discoverable Bass as well. Olivier has put together an incredible program all about uh, bowing with the double bass. So thanks for joining me, Olivier. Thanks. And thanks everyone for watching at home. We'll see you next time.